La 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 wait till I get my body right Trigger warning, some of the topics we cover in this video may be a little bit sensitive to some people. When I say sensitive, not in a weird way, it's just that we're going to be talking about the physical form, which is anatomy, which some people could find problems with in a body dysmorphia kind of way. And it's okay, because I'm with you on that, right? But I just wanted to let you know that off the bat. By the time you see this video, it will no longer be news. So there's no point in me pretending like I was the first to discover this because I probably weren't, right? But we're still gonna use this as a great opportunity to teach, right? A teaching tool. Now, why do I say this isn't gonna be news by the time you see it? Well, because it's covering the topic of a popular person during a particular tumultuous period of their life. Now that person in particular is a YouTube star called Nicocado Avocado, if that's how you say his name. Now some of you may know him from back in the day. He was a big guy that ate a lot of food, does what they call mukbangs. I'm still not quite sure what that means, right? It sounds like a, I don't want to be like racy or anything, but it sounds like a bit of a, an Asian word. Like a, it, gives, it gives like Thai vibes, right? So he's famous for doing mukbangs, which is basically just eating a bunch of food on camera. Throughout the years of his career on YouTube, he gained a significant amount of weight. So he started out at roughly an average body weight for your average American, maybe. Now, I don't know the exact weight that he reached at his peak, but I do know this. In 2024, Nick Ocado uploaded a video showing a skinnier version of himself and claiming that he's lost 250 pounds. Today, I woke up from a very long dream. And I also woke up having lost 250 pounds off of my body. Yeah, just yesterday, people were calling me fat and sick and boring and irrelevant. People. People are the most messed up creatures on the entire planet. And yet I've still managed to stay two steps ahead of Caroline. Now that is a feet and a half, right? 250 pounds is a whole human and a big human at that, right? So hats off to him for that because that is a fucking feet and a half. I've been trying to like read the news versus watch the news because I don't know, intellectuals be like, the real stuff is when you read. But I discovered today the bullshit is printed as well. Khloe Kardashian said, now that she's lost weight, she doesn't have a camel toe. Could you imagine losing weight and then seeing somebody you ain't seen for a while? And they'd be like, oh my God, what's different about you? And you're like, oh, I lost weight. And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> but the thing is this, it's super dope that he did that. But he did this whole like, ooh, I'm the villain now, like I'm two steps ahead, mm, smart, smart, right? Like, I, you get it, right? You get it. I get where he's coming from, but let's look into that first before we get into his weight loss journey because it's all interesting. And the way I interpret this, you may be able to learn something from this. And hopefully it's a teachable moment, especially in the world of fitness and the active world and all that kind of stuff. But off the bat, big up this guy, bruv. Congratulations to this guy, right? Because that is not easy. It is not easy to lose weight. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit obese, a little bit overweight, or if you're like on death's door heavy, right? Losing weight is no easy feat, right? Because your body naturally wants to keep weight on. And if you're going through things like psychologically, it's a lot of stress and stuff like that, it makes it even harder, right? So congratulations to this guy. I know what it's like, right? And if you're watching right now and you're thinking, look, you're fucking skinny, bruv. What do you know? Look. I didn't always look like this, and I'm not even skinny right now. Technically, on the NHS BMI index, I am clinically obese, right? So just keep that in mind. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I say, right? So yes, let's talk about his uh, new persona, so to speak, right? So he's hitting him with the, I'm the villain now, like I'm the bad guy, right? Because to be fair, everybody's been talking shit about this guy for years, right? Especially in the fitness industry. People like Greg Doucette have, have fucking gone in on this guy so many times and it's just like, come on, bruv. Really, if he's in fact acting, if this is all a show to make money and so on, is he actually two steps ahead? He's two steps closer to getting a heart attack. Does that sound like somebody that's got it all together? The guy become morbidly obese on purpose, getting heart attacks, mayor and CPAP machines, guy is a walking cookbook. But Nick O'Connor realizes that he shouldn't have abused his body for views and for money. It's extremely difficult for my psyche, for my, my motivation to get out of bed, knowing that my job is to face people who hate me. And so think of it, he puts on a show, perhaps one hour a day, recording videos, of which he faces a bunch of people that don't even like him. They want to sit there, make fun of him, poke jokes at him, and so on. But for the rest of the day, the remaining 23 hours, he has to live with himself and all of it. In fact, close to 400 pounds of it. They're here for someone fat. And you know, it's just, I, I just wanna, I just, I wish I could go back in time. And so they're not there following him, rooting for Nick. They're rooting for some fat guy. The guy that identifies as being skinny. And so they're not really fans of Nick Ocado, the avocado, the real Nick Ocado. They're fans of this version of himself that happens to be an obese, out of shape person that's not pursuing his dream. And so for a man who's always two steps ahead, why is he now doing mukbang videos? Essentially, to sum it up, he went through an eight year journey, became morbidly obese at 400 pounds, then starved himself, probably used Ozempic, essentially lost all his muscle, is so out of shape that now dancing for a couple of minutes injures him, and he's back to doing YouTube videos, doing mukbangs. How do you think that's gonna work out for him? But no. 
he's two steps ahead. Like, yeah, we get it. He made himself overweight by eating food on camera, but he had to because it was his business formula, right? You know, he was a slave to the business that made him who he is. Just like a lot of pop stars and famous people. So I always tell you guys, be careful who you idolize, right? But anyway, this is his time, right? This is his time to peacock, right? Now, I personally think every grown man, right, at some point in life should go through a villain arc, right? Yeah, just like nearly right i don't want to stereotype but nearly every woman you know in life has gone through a whole phase right both of these heroes like you he like the officials not the man who thinks he's about exactly. the exactly the point of the batman we did it. all of us who stood by and let scum take control of our city but this is a democracy harvey when their enemies were at the gates the romans would suspend democracy and appoint one man to protect the city and it wasn't considered an honor it was considered a public service harvey the last man that they appointed to protect the republic was named caesar and he never gave up his power okay fine you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain Every man should go through a villain arc. Get into that point and, might I add, go through the villain arc and live long enough to become a hero, right? In reverse of what Batman told you, because that's the best way to do it. You wanna live long enough to become a villain? Ha, good luck with that, right? Start as a villain and become a hero, right? That's that's the real cycle of humanity, right? Anyway, we get into that, that li nice little Darth Vader redemption cycle for your ass, right? But anyway. This has been the greatest social experiment of my entire life. It's alluring, it's compelling, it's gripping to observe all these unwell, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories, ideas, rivalries, where they feel encouraged and engaged, where they can involve themselves with the stories and become a product of influence. Thirsty for distraction from time unspent, spoiling their minds, yet stimulated at the same time. It's brilliant, and it's dangerous. Big up Nick Ocado, right? Because what he done is not easy. Now, this is his chance to actually soak in and not like so i'm not disrespecting or disregarding anybody else's body weight struggles or body dysmorphia whether you you're happy being bigger or you're not right i'm not disregarding you at all we'll get to that in a minute this is his chance to peacock a little bit and just to be like not proud of himself but just have other people respect his discipline respect his hustle respect his game right because it's not easy if it was easy everyone would do it right so keep that in mind so this is his chance to have that respect have that self-respect and just uplift other people and uplift themselves, right? So, congratulations, bros. It's not easy. Big up your villain arc, right? But don't stay there, right? Just make sure you come back over to the good side, right? But have your little moment, have your little run so you can just be like, all right, fuck you lot, right? Because I remember how you treated me when I was bigger. I remember all the things you said about me when I didn't look so appealing, right? I know how that feels. If you go back on my channel and watch the video that says Dexter, the reality of looks maxing, you understand that I absolutely understand where Nick Ocado is coming from and how he must feel right now, right? Because man is not created equal, right? And we're all on a sliding scale of being judged and like perceived in certain ways that is completely unfair and out of our control right the dna lottery is out of our control we're born with what we got and we live with it right so some people are naturally more predisposed to gaining weight easier and some are predisposed to losing it easier right and or not able to put it on at all right that's what we call hard gainers right and people dealing with um eating disorders so yeah it is it's not just a psychological it was my fault thing right some of it is your fault but some of it's not it's the hand you're dealt right and then you do the best you can with the hand you're dealt this is his time to just enjoy being on the other side of that and and actually be able to separate the good people from the bad people in his life right so he's like yeah you was only my friend because of this right and then you was hating me because of this so he, he can kind of see the waters now it's like i know people's like money changes you kind of thing it's one of those situations but it kind of is right but anyway so on that note of nick Ocado playing the villain there's something i just want to press on your psyche right if i can right a villain although we use him as like a tool to tell stories or an antagonist right protagonist antagonist deuteragonist whatever right however you want to drop that a villain is always going to be somebody that is willing to look at the state of the world look at the state of their own situation and attempt to change something right a lot of the time the hero right just plays the role of maintaining status quo by stopping the villain. Now we're talking superhero levels, right? You don't want to be Superman. You'd rather be Lex Luthor in the real world, right? Remember, Lex Luthor was the president, right? He was willing to change some shit. Although we look at villains the way we've been taught to, if you really just step back and analyze the psychology of a villain and what's perceived the villain, remember, as they say, everybody is the villain in somebody's story, right? So remember that, it's not a bad thing to be perceived as the villain, as long as you're not actually doing wrong and hurting people. I feel as if I'm monitoring the ants on an ant farm. 
one follows another, follows another, follows another. It's mesmerizing. It's spellbinding. All these little consumers, all these lost, bored people, people consuming anything that they're told to consume. So I am the villain, because I've made myself one. And you will continue to consume these stories about me, year after year after year, for as long as I tell the internet that I am the villain. Stories that permeate and linger and infect the minds of the ants, influence the ants, brainwash the ants. You are the ants. I understand why he would take up this position, especially the way people have treated him, right? And all the adversity he's had to go through. So yes, big up to Nick because he's actually, like I just said, willing to change something and he did that and now that he has made that change it's going to upset a lot of people that wish to maintain that status quo of what nick used to represent right so remember the bad guy that's perceived isn't always the bad guy right the good guy you perceive isn't always necessarily the good guy either right just like the joker introduced some anarchism into the world of gotham such is the life on youtube right the reason for him posting his odyssey from fat to sickly trixie mattel was to expose how similar his overconsumption of food was to our overconsumption of internet content. Whilst he can clearly control his overconsumption of food, we will always be enslaved by our desire to form narratives, our desire to witness downfalls and depravity. According to him, he was in control the whole time. And this was to expose you, the viewer, the mindless bored peasant that you are, as being the ultimate gullible hypocrite and addict that you for years accused him of being. He was only the villain because he importantly chose to make himself one. Unlike him, we really didn't choose to be the fools. We just are the fools. And you know what? I really couldn't agree with him more, but... Forgive me if I just don't buy it. I came back to the Stephanie Sue Nikocado avocado drama to announce Nikocado's weight loss revenge against Stephanie Sue. He won. And this comment, and many like it, conflating his weight loss with revenge on various commentary channels and YouTubers that he's had beef with over the years, is indicative of what I think most of this is actually about. Firstly, fat people online aren't taken seriously, and Nikocado avocado knows this all too well. In fact, playing into this was the entirety of his character. And even when he wasn't necessarily or wholeheartedly in the wrong when it came to the various controversies and dramas that he was in, even when he brought receipts and made relatively good arguments, nobody really cared. I so understand the role Nikocado is playing now after the fact, right? But you gotta remember. His circumstances made him who he is, right? And like I said on a stream recently, life, whether you like it or not, is kind of predetermined, right? And I know you may not believe in determinism, and you might even be a bit of a solipsist, right? If that's the way to say it. But I mean it's determined like this, right? Your mind exists within your brain. But your mind is something you can't tangibly explain and say this exists. The only way you can do that is by saying your mind, which you have thoughts from and you perceive yourself and perceive the world from, exists within your brain. Now we can tangibly say your brain exists, right? Because it's matter. The thing is with your brain, your brain is affected by all of its external circumstances, the chemicals that are in it, the hormones, the neurons, electrical signals, damage, all of these kind of things affect your brain, therefore affect how you think inside of your mind, right? So your thoughts, your character are all predetermined by external factors that have nothing to do with you. So keeping that in mind, I understand where the boy's coming from, right? These things have happened to him, so he's gonna be this person now. Even if he's not really this person and he's pulling a Charleston White and just playing the bad guy or playing whatever, right? Just fucking with you to keep the entertainment cycle going. I understand it, right? But hey, Big ups to you, Nick, once again. Now, the reason it's interesting how Nick Ocado pulled this off, disappearing for two years and coming back as like, almost a different person at a different way, is this. He made you believe that he was gonna stay this way and what he was watching was the truth, right? Which was the truth at the time when it was filmed. And then he done like a bait and switch, like actually this is reality and this is what I look like now. Yes, it's really me. I am not AI. I am not a clone. I am a real person and it's me. I've had a lot of feedback over the past couple of days. I would like to know how I can prove to you that I'm real. There are currently news agencies publishing articles about me being artificial intelligence. There's a video on TikTok with 15 million views saying that I am not real. How can I prove to you that I am real? Now, although a lot of his viewers might be upset and and a lot of them will be supportive, me as a like a little bit, like I like to say I'm paranoid instead of educated because it, it doesn't make me seem like a prick, like a narc, right? And maybe I'm a little bit of a prick and a little bit of a narc, right? Yeah, who isn't, right? Yeah, like the witches from Zelda. <laughs> but anyway, right? The reason it's interesting to me is because of what he's going to do next. Now, me just taking an educated guess, he has documented this entire journey of weight loss, right? And he's probably made a film, probably made a documentary, and like I said, if he did do those extremes, there's going to probably be some surgery videos and shit like that of him being in the hospital and all that. This is my estimation or guesstimation. But this could be good for a lot of people to see what's possible. And it could also be bad because of this. Chances are, 
Nick Ocado is probably going to use this as an opportunity to sell his transformation, right? How he did it, a, a guide, a diet, a cookbook, a bunch of a series of what he exercised, how he exercised. Now, of course, he probably doesn't need to because he's got a lot of money, but just in business terms, in like the way the world's run today, any opportunity to sell you something, people will take, right? So that is the bad way I see that this could play out, right? So that's why I feel it's important to just give you a quick baseline of the right way to do things. So if he does go down the wrong way of doing things and like kind of perpetuates this wrong way of doing things, now I say wrong very subjectively, right? Because there's truly no right or wrong way, as long as it's not extreme and dangerous to your health. But yeah, the chances are he's going to be selling you something to do with fitness or how he did it is his footage and all these kinds of things right just like you have like uh, like random gamers or big streamers that sell you these products like prime or like goof juice and shit like that it's like you shouldn't be ingesting that all right just because someone famous is selling you it doesn't mean it's good for you right doesn't mean it's even right for them to be selling that right but then, hey that's, it's none of my business but i know that that's how the game goes, right? Branch chain amino acids, whey protein, deaspartic acid, zinc, magnesium, protection, creatine, CLF, Ferrotrox. Honestly, guys, you really need to try it because, um, there always seems to be a new, incredible supplement that comes in insane results. But if you look a little closer, there's something very off with the industry. I saw corners being cut. I saw supplements being spiked. Consumers being lied to. Consumers being drugged. Consumers literally being killed. If this is true, how are so many of these supplements still on shelves? And how could such an evil industry be worth over $70 billion? The game of fame is to build a platform and then translate that over to selling people things with a personality, right? And then eventually you become a licensable personality. Hey, let's reach out to Nick Ocado and see if we can get his image put on our product to make people think the way Nick got the way he is now is by using our product. The way Nick got the way he is now is by using our exercise program. Like all of these things are gonna happen in the fitness industry. And by the time you see this video, I almost guarantee a bunch of people have made videos and rolled out programs and shit and, and diets and uh, supplements and all kinds of bullshit that you don't need if you just do the basics and do it the right way. Influencer marketing has been crucial to the rise of supplements. You only need to look back at Sando. I mean, he had people chugging his chocolate powder in the hopes of gaining strength and muscle. What made Joe Wider a very wealthy man was his early leverage of influencer marketing. He made a fortune selling things like this dodgy looking string in a box and flat visors simply because it was used by the handsomest men and women to stay fit and slim. And this is still going on. That is the marketing right there. The fitness celebrity and the supplements next to them with the implication that those products here will move you towards looking like that person. This is anecdote, not evidence for a supplement working. The sad thing is, it seems like the endorsement of influencers is all that's needed and the actual quality of the product often doesn't matter. So I thought I'd add that as a very important kind of, um, not a disclaimer, but like a very key note of this whole topic, right? Marketing is going to sell you stuff, right? People are going to shill, people are going to grift, right? But that's not really my intention. It's more to just make you aware of this and still entertain you at the same time with a little smidge of education if you stick around to the end, right? You want to know how to become the best you. It starts with information, right? And information should be free. That's why our sponsor, if it was there, but it's not. Let's talk about his actual transformation, right? Because perhaps by the time you see this, he may have actually released some information about it because what he actually done was batch cook all of his videos, right? Kind of like what you were talking about now, right? Hush, hush. He batch cooked his videos because it was only mukbangs. It wasn't too hard to film videos like that. So he would be releasing all of these videos like on his schedule for two years. But while in real life, like IRL, right? He wasn't the same Nick Ocado you was watching every week on YouTube, right? He was transforming. He was going through changes, right? He was living a life away from the scene, which is intelligent, like as you should be, right? You, you don't have to live your life for the public. Although the public wants to see that, the truth is the perception of what you are is more important to the public than what you actually are, right? Unfortunately, humans are gonna be human no matter what situation or scenario you put them in. But that being said, right, let's talk about the possible negative or extreme ways he achieved this in two years, right? And if you're watching, I hope to God you don't take these routes, right? And we'll talk about the right way after. So if you, if you don't wanna hear the extreme ways and the extreme ways might trigger you or upset you, please feel free to forward to the right ways, all right? The average person is not a Nicocado avocado, right? You're probably not YouTube rich and you probably have other things to deal with in life and other commitments, right? So you're not just um, like a, a rich bachelor. I don't really know his like personal stories because I don't really watch Nicocado like that, but it's just, it's one of those people that comes across your timeline because YouTube's algorithm, right? So chances are you're not a Nicocado and you don't have almost unlimited results Sources financially and you could get the best doctors and the best surgery right chances are you're not right so don't think about going down this route right just, just don't 
right? So I'm going to give you some extreme ways that he possibly achieved this. One is surgery, right? Which is a bait one. Maybe getting a, a tummy tuck or his, his tummy, stomach tired and then a surgery for the loose skin after, right? This is very likely part of his scenario, right? And then there's sickness falling ill with something a terminal disease or something like that all right that's a possibility that can make you lose weight really fast in two years right and then there's excessive cardio or excessive exercising being extreme and almost getting rhabdo right so you don't want to be like i know david goggins is a bad example because he, he's not done it to the point where he's got sick but he is extreme with his cardio and exercise routine right that's a way you can do this and then there's eating disorders being extreme with your calorie restriction, basically starving yourself, right? So they're the extremes that we, we hope that he didn't do, but it's very likely he did do. And oh my ad, there's a chance that he might be like in the queue for the Ozempeg, whatever that's called, right? The drugs that make you skinny, right? Or suppress your appetite. It's very likely because he's he's a he's a celebrity, isn't he? Ozempic is it's primarily used to treat type 2 diabetes. That's what it was FDA approved for initially in 2017. It belongs to a class of medications called GLP-1 receptor agonists. Three main areas of pancreas where it promotes the absorption of glucose into tissues to be used for energy. And this ultimately causes a decrease in blood glucose levels. The brain where it decreases appetite by reducing the feeling of hunger. The GI tract where it slows down the movement of food and thus makes us feel more full. It has been shown to reduce weight. The most common side effects are nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, dizziness, increased heart rate, headaches, reflux, acute kidney injury. We need to apply these tools sparingly and with caution. Now we have Ozempic. Ozempic, but it's this idea that when people are taking Ozempic, uh, also called semaglutide, and they lose weight, or by the way, Wagovi, well, Wagovi is semaglutide approved for uh, weight loss, but whatever people may be taking, Wagovi or, uh, or uh, Ozempic, they're losing weight and, and ending up with Ozempic butt. We did a video on Ozempic face, now we have Ozempic butt. So what is it? It's this idea that you lose weight, you lose enough weight, perhaps you lose weight quickly enough, that your skin starts to sag, and that's in your derriere, your bum, your bottom, your butt, whatever you call it. Um, and that can happen, honestly, guys, with any time we, number one, lose weight, lose a certain amount of weight, lose weight uh, at a certain speed, uh, we can get sagging skin, and that's what some people are realizing as they go through their, say, Ozempic or Wagovi or weight loss journey, what have you. So when we talk about Ozempic, but is it surprising? Well, not really. Um, is it something that you can fix? Sure, um, weight gain will do that, although that's not what we necessarily recommend. But yeah, there are cosmetic procedures, only go to board certified doctors and things like that. Uh, there's toning and stuff that you can do. I'll, I'll leave that to the plastic surgeons, et cetera, the cosmetic folks. But point being is, if you notice uh, with rapid weight loss or weight loss of a certain amount that you start getting sagging face, Ozempic face, or sagging bottom, it could simply just be a result of uh, the weight loss. Now, before we talk about the right way, I just have to make a quick like not a disclaimer but we just we need to discuss this right because it's important because people that are new to these kinds of topics might get confused i might go in the wrong direction right and i don't want that to happen so allow me to save you hundreds of hours and possibly heartbreak and looking like an arsehole by wasting too much time watching the wrong types of content in the YouTube fitness world, right? The fitness industry is an industry, you can go back and listen to like Mike Mensah philosophize about how the industry changed just to sell you stuff, like any other industry, right? To sell you protein, sell you gym equipment, sell you gym clothes, right? It is that, right? The first ad I ever ran in 1977 to sell my books, I advertised myself in bold print as bodybuilding's foremost iconoclast. Iconoclast means literally image breaker, while every other top bodybuilder uncritically, unquestioningly accepted the Weider Schwarzenegger dogma, which had and still has individuals training up to four hours a day. I, upon hearing the truth as told by one Arthur Jones, discarded that junk immediately, and I've never sacrificed my view of the truth. Yes, I was a rebel, am a rebel, and always will be, albeit no longer blindly rebellious, as I was often in my youth. I now consider myself a radical for the truth, and if my telling the truth makes certain people angry, that's their problem. I decided some time ago that I'm not on this earth to win a damn popularity contest. People come into the fitness industry with good hearts, good minds, good intentions, and they become shills and grifters on their way out, right? I'm trying to sell you this. Join my company, join my program, like all this bullshit, right? They come in with good intentions. And, like, and you're gonna be like, who the fuck am I to say anything? Who the fuck am I, bruv? I've got uh, a fucking B-Tech in sports in high school, right? To be fair, that's a better qualification than most people that you listen to in fitness YouTube anyway. But uh, uh, I've always been involved in active lifestyle, fitness culture, playing sports, just being active, right? As a kid, we were poor. So the most of our time was active, right? It was physical right we didn't have things to play right we didn't have things to think about so to speak right that's why i'm a bit smarter now as an adult the fitness industry has to keep making content to keep going right so they'll contradict themselves constantly they'll tell you do this exercise don't do that exercise eat this don't eat that just because they have to make content right and then they, and then while they make content they have to advertise to sell you stuff in the content right so just take that with a grain of salt i'm not dissing anybody that's in the fitness industry and to be fair if you're planning on being like a fitness influencer you're probably not going to be watching this kind of channel right because it's a bit more like i'm not even political right but 
some people tell me I'm left and I'm like what does that even mean I don't get into politics so I don't understand them right but anyway right that, that's just me if I don't understand it enough I don't get involved in it but anyway chances are if you're aiming to be like a fitness influencer or just an influencer in general you're probably not going to be watching a channel like this unless you're studying me to like learn something or copy something which which i find a lot of you are but it's, it's, imitation is the greatest form of flattery right I'm, I'm, i appreciate that that means if no one's copying you then you have nothing to offer really truly but anyway chances are you're not one of those people right you're just a normal average joe like me trying to get entertained trying to listen to something while you're at work or do what you do or maybe you're actually in the gym right now hopefully Right, so anyway, the fitness industry must go on, right? Let me condense my amassed YouTube fitness hours into this video, right? If I could, right? Maybe I'll have to expand on this a bit later. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And oh yeah, like, subscribe, and share, all right? I never say this. Please subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like. It helps a lot. Like people think we just begging on YouTube. No, the YouTube algorithm is our boss. It's our slave master. If we don't please it, it whips us. <laughs> yeah, I'm but it does right so uh, let's go step by step right first kind of things i want to warn you against right don't hurt yourself don't try to do too much too quick right if you've got a lot of weight to lose or a little weight to lose if you want to get big or if you want to get smaller right just be patient everything takes time right just think about how long as a human being it took you to grow to the position you are now all right so it takes time to grow and it takes time to shrink if, if that makes sense but really you're growing still right you, you're growing physically psychologically spiritually if you will <laughs> all right but it takes time right so don't rush don't hurt yourself right and don't let other people convince you you need to rush either you want to be like um i know this is a bad example but i always think of this example you want to be like a uh, emperor or whatever his name is zuko's uncle right Ira or something like that. Ira, I watched the Avatar since I was a little kid. But like when they put him in the cell and they just think he's just some fat, stupid old man, right? And they come back and he's just traded in the cell quietly. No one knows, right? He just comes out bare heads, right? That's what you want to be like, right? You don't want to be in the, in your face like, mm, yeah, look at me. Mm, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, then everyone's like, this guy's a prick, bro. This girl's a prick. Bro. Why, why are you wearing all this tight shit and you got so much fat hanging out? Stop that. You, you've been you've been brainwashed all right we get to that too in a minute if you want to find out your starting point right your base first you want to do a bmi calculation and i believe that's like your height your weight your age right i may be a little off there right you, but you can get just google a little calculator and just put this details in it will tell you right and then you want to get your calorie base right and you find out how much you eat to sustain the body weight that you are right now and this this is all just a quick google away right you don't have to do any maths there's a calculator that does it for you uh, like maybe put a screenshot on the screen right from that point right i suggest don't try to cut anything out on your calories don't try to add anything to your calories yet right this is a tried and true way of doing things for bodybuilders for everybody right first thing is first just chill right and record what you eat right so you find out what you like to eat what you dislike to eat that keeps you at the body weight right because you don't want to crash diet you don't want to just be like i'm not eating this no more I'm not eating that no more and then you, you just f yourself over right a little bit of junk food is healthy right it's, it's it's healthy for you psychologically right most of all right because if, if your mind's not right none of this stuff works right? none of this stuff is worth doing right you could be like you could be ripped ripped right? and everyone's like well, look at your body bro you're sick right and in your brain you're like i want to die I hate this, I hate myself, I hate everybody, right? So there's no point being like that if you feel like that inside, right? Which most bodybuilders will tell you, you get to a certain level, that is exactly how you feel, right? So just chill, don't don't cut nothing out, don't add nothing yet, just find out what you eat, right? So record yourself for a week or two, right? See what you eat daily, like, make sure you eat stuff that you like too on, on those weeks, right? Don't like, don't fudge the numbers, to, cause you're only effing yourself over, right? So record what you eat weekly, right? And then you get your calorie base. So let, I'm just giving an example. Don't go by this example. Find out your personal details, cause this, everybody is different. So let's just say for instance, right? Your daily calorie intake for whatever weight you are, whatever height you are, your body mass index, right? Is just for example, is 2000 calories, which it probably won't be, right? Cause 2000 calories is quite low. That's, that's really cutting weight or your, small in height or small in size stature right some people need up to 6,000 calories a day right all depends on you so let's just say right it's example to stay the way you are right now hopefully you feel okay right you don't you're not fucked up health wise right remember i'm not a doctor and this is not health advice i'm just giving you a 
a broad look at this kind of shit, right? Don't try any of this without any professional advice if you feel that you need to change yourself, right? Because who the fuck am I, right? If you could tell you, you need to change, right? Fuck, fuck me, fuck you, you know? Anyway, fuck, fuck is me, fuck is you, you know that song there, right? It's a French song, uh, I forget her name. I think it's Chrissy or something like that, right? Say your base is 2,000 calories, right? Now, if you want to lose weight, what you do is take 500 calories off of that a day. So you'd be eating 1,500 calories, but don't, because that is like competition weight and calories, right? You don't need to do that, right? This is just an example. Now, I'm keeping it simple maths, because me and you, we know we're both dancers, but we're quite intelligent at the same time, right? We know, I know. And you fucking know it, or else you wouldn't be on YouTube, you prick, right? Anyway, that deficit of 500 will bring you a, a, added up across the week, right? Every day you're taking 500 calories off, and this is a this is quite a big jump, right? And we'll get into what apps to use to make sure this is easier, and you can do it incrementally instead of big jumps, like I'm telling you, right? So every day you're taking 500 calories off, right? By the end of the week, you've lost maybe a pound or half a pound. Don't know the exact science, don't know the exact maths. I'm just giving you an example, right? That's a deficit. That's called a deficit, right? So that little reduction in calorie, that's without you doing any exercise, without you doing any extra steps. It's just that much less food that you intake, right? Which, depending on what you eat, might not be a lot of food at all, right? It might actually be like a handful of Harry Bows or some shit like that, right? Life is strange, right? The human anatomy is strange, right? But anyway, if you did that for a week, right? By the end of the week, you would lose roughly a pound or half a pound, right? Now, the opposite is also true, right? So if you added 500 calories a day, right? That's called a calorie surplus, right? And by the end of the week, you would have added a pound, right? Now, when we say we added weight, weight, right and fat are two different things right remember that always remember that do not confuse that with when someone says to you i want to lose weight you look at them and say okay so you want to lose some water you want to lose some fat you want to lose some muscle right you want to take a shit you need to take a piss you want to spit that is losing weight right if you want to lose fat it's a similar process but don't look at your scale for details, right? You need to look in the mirror and you need to go see some people, science, see people that can do scans and shit like that. But over time, you will be able to visibly see fat loss, right? So what we're talking about is gain and loss in weight, right? So by the end of the week, that pound you lost or pound you gain, a significant portion of it is gonna be water, right? Because you, you're, I don't know your percentage, I'll put it up here. That's how much percentage of water you are as a human being, right? So make sure you're drinking your water. So that's your base, right? Now for a week or two, you found out how much you weigh, how high you, how, how tall you are, how high you are. <laughs> I bet you are as well. Don't smoke, don't do drugs, kids, right? You found out who you are, right? How much it takes to stay you. When you're gonna begin now and you've decided I wanna gain weight or I wanna lose weight, now you start to add or take away. That's what you need to decide first. You find out who you are, what you weigh, and then we move on from there. Now we're gonna be talking a little bit more jargon, and to be fair, I might even get the terminology wrong, but when I do, I'll probably put up a description, a little um, a little Google definition to, to correct myself, right? Forgive me, because I'm not a genius like you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now we've decided if we're gonna gain weight or we're gonna lose weight, all right? Because chances are you could, you can do both at the same time, but that's more advanced. That's called recomposition. That means you'll be trying to gain muscle while losing body fat, right? That's for advanced people. Although it happens to you naturally as a newbie, as a beginner, right? So don't worry about that kind of shit. It's for advanced people. Advanced, right? You know, start the base, right? This is boot camp. You don't get to join the Navy SEALs before you finish boot camp, right? So this is boot camp, right? Not, not like that. My fucking 300 pound life, we're gonna get you, whip you into shape by shouting at you and making you feel like shit. Fuck those people, right? They don't work, they're pricks. They're just there to entertain other pricks, right? So don't, don't be like them. We've decided that we wanna gain or lose weight, right? The next thing is, what we gonna eat, right? So it's quite simple. You can still eat a bit of junk food as long as it's within that calorie intake, but you wanna focus first on high quality protein, high quality carbs and high quality fibers. Now, just to break it down, food pyramids from back in the day are mostly bullshit and has a lot of politics embedded in it because the farming industries and shit like that, people want to sell you stuff. Buy this shit, right? And if we get Eddie, right? Eddie will tell you a lot of this shit is shit. Don't fear. When you go to the supermarkets, you can still make good choices. Go straight past all the packet fucking colorful shit that's screaming at you, pick me, pick me. Don't go. Go straight to where the meat is. Go to the, you know, vegetables. Cooking is empowering. If you want to look after yourself, you learn to cook. That's, we are supposed to do the processing. We don't leave the processing to these corporations. Remember, the trick is make sure your food is cooked by a real a human being. Not by a corporation, not by a machine. Sickness is a business.
Remember that. One in two of us will get cancer in our lifetime. If you're born after 1960, they're saying that one in two of us will get cancer. Remember that. And then nine out of 10 illnesses are related to what we eat. When you say we are metabolically related, that means our lifestyle. That means if we change our lifestyle, we can prevent some of these metabolic um, diseases. Everything that is wrong with us is coming from in here. As soon as you change your diet, make a change to your diet, you see the change in your results. Now, the reason why they make us all these foods, it's not for our health, it's for profit. Because real food that has fiber in it, has the right, has the right nutrients in it, doesn't last very long on the shelves. So they've got to make stuff that lasts for as long as possible for transportation. Guys, it's all about profit. What they do is that they make foods that are going to last for as fucking long as possible on the shelves because they want you your money. It has never been about calories. They write big fucking calorie on the thing and then they put all the fucking chemical shit at the back. The fuck? And then we're all eating all that shit because you don't realize that's the shit that's fucking us up. It's supposed to be gut health. This will fuck your gut. That's a fucking protein bar. Look, look, you see, high protein, both. Look at the back, and they fold over the fucking shitty ingredients. Fold it over. They don't want you to see it. They don't want you to read this fucking thing. Why? Because you're fuckers. Eddie is 100% right, although he's very brash. You've got to remember, most of the people that try to discredit Eddie, right, or cuss Eddie down, right, I'm talking about Eddie Abu, yeah, none of them have achieved what Eddie has achieved, right? Eddie was on the stage with the greats. All right? So keep that shit in mind next time you want to listen to another influencer that hasn't done shit tell you about Eddie being wrong, remember that. They ain't done half of what Eddie's done, right? So Eddie's right, a lot of the food you eat is shit. But me, like you, I still eat the shit and I know it's shit, right? That's just human behavior and I can accept that, right? Because I'm an adult, right? So yes, you want to first, before you eat your junk food, before you have your cookies, before you have your biscuits, because I do as well, right? This is the shit that keeps you sane and this is the shit that keeps you on track, right? You can't be from one extreme to the other. It'll never work, right? You have to have balance you need balance yeah before you eat your junk foods right and uh like if you drink coffee and all that shit that helps too we'll get into that another time right? it's called appetite suppressant right but don't do drugs kids because caffeine is a drug yeah the biggest caffeine and sugar and taurine but oh, fuck it. anyway so before we're talking about calorie intake still right so for your 500 reductio or <laughs> adding <laughs> right you'll probably cut out some of the bad shit. Probably, maybe, maybe not, right? But first in your diet, right, whatever you're deciding to do, gain weight or lose weight, you need to focus on having high quality protein. That's your chickens, your fishes, your beefs, your porks. If you're vegan, maybe some lentils, beans, whatever you can find with higher protein details in it, right? You'll see in the macronutrients on the back of the can, right? That comes in a can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fuck. You know what I mean, innit? You know what I mean, innit? Like, you know what I mean, anyway, fucking. Right, so get your high proteins to give you some protein sorbs, then your higher quality carbs. I know you're not supposed to eat rice and shit like that, but fuck, you, rice is just a good example of what a carb is, right? Then your high quality fibers. High quality fibers usually comes in the form of fruits and veg, right? Just to keep it simple, right? So look at those things first, and then after you've covered your base, like most of your calorie intake is those things, then have your sweets, then have your crisp, then have your fucking hot dogs and your pizzas, right? So I have a fucking pizza all the time, right? <laughs> Man's gotta live, innit? Like, you know, what's the point in being alive if you can't live, right? So yeah, do all that base shit first, and then you move on, right? Now we're gonna talk about the shit you came for. Jim. All right. So before we get into that, I've got to give you some don'ts. Number one, which is kind of two in one. Do not, and I repeat, do not compete or compare yourself to strangers. I'm looking at you, ego lifter. I'm looking at you, Jane, right? Stop comparing yourself to other people, right? Physically, psychologically, financially, and stop competing with strangers, right? You don't know what levels everyone is at, right? This, this, is, this, this thing is deep, yeah? I'm gonna put up a meme right here. That is how deep this thing is, right? So watch out. Number two, right? Which these other rules are just, I'm just gonna try and help you not look like a prick and become a prick, right? No fucking Gymshark. No Gold's Gym April. No, any big brand that tells you you need to wear this to look good in the gym, don't do it. Because to the real gymmers, you look like a prick and you look like an unserious person, right? Don't do it. Get rid of your Gymshark shit. Get rid of your gold. I know people are like, you can't say that though, right? You're defaming the brand. Look, they fucking know what they're doing. They just want to sell you shit. There's, I seen an ad the other day and I was like, get this out of my fucking face. Get the C-bum look. Do you know who C-bum is, right? You can't get the C-bum look, you arsehole, because you're not C-bum, right? You don't take the steroids. You're not Mr. Olympia. Put that shit away because to a real person, you look like an idiot. You look like a wannabe, right? And you don't want to be a wannabe even if you're a rapper. 
right? So fucking get get real, right? Go get yourself a tracksuit, right? They made tracksuits for exercising, right? There's nothing wrong with women wearing tracksuits. Loose fitting clothes is what it's made for, right? Men too, it's just what the fuck they made it for. So use it. Stop wearing skin tight shit if you're not competition ready. Now, I'm not dissing you. If you're gonna do that shit, give yourself some time first, right? Earn it, right? Of course, you might still wear some fucking tights to pull over your stomach and shit with some fat hanging out, some back fat and whatever, belly fat and shit, fine, right? But don't do that shit on your first year of training. Earn that shit. And then you walk through the gym and, and everyone's like, yeah, she did that, bruv. I remember when she started, bruv. She fucking did that. And then this dickhead wearing a string vest and he ain't even got a muscle to show, like delusional, right? Don't do that. Wait. Earn that shit, right? Just, I'm saying that to stop you from looking like a prick, right? And then the other thing is, no excessive phone use. Now, I use my phone in the gym. I watch shorts in between my sets, but I'm on a timer, right? So I know one minute after I finish this set and I'm back in. Serious trainers and shit like that won't have none of that, right? Understood. But no excessive phone use, no excessive Instagramming. And if you're a live streamer, like I do sometimes, do it discreetly and respect other people. No bait tripods. And if you do, just respect that other people don't want to be in your video and they don't want to feel uncomfortable while they're training, right? Even though they probably will for all other kinds of psychological reasons that have nothing to do with you. And then no excessive chatting. You know that prick that you want to call your gym partner? He's just there to waste time and he wants to fucking release all his stress on you, right? Tell him to piss off if he's not here to train with you. Tell her to piss off because she wants you to come to the gym to make her feel less insecure about herself. Tell her to fuck off. If we're not here to train, then go away. I want to train on my own and do what I came to do, right? I know some of you think the gym is a social club, but it's not. Now, old man Grinch out of the way. I'm gonna put up some fucking videos of Dorian Yates and fucking Ronnie Coleman and fucking Phil Heath and Kai Green so you could see, right, what real fucking work looks like, right? We ain't fucking about, yeah? You're fucking about. That's why you ain't got no progress. All right, remember that. All right, so that was your don'ts. And they're just very superficial don'ts, right? I'll tell you some more don'ts as I get into it. So I think I'm just gonna give you some headers and then slightly break down what they are and move on after that because it takes a lot of time to get into this, right? This is a long ass video as it is. Before you go into the gym, right? You need to think about what your goals are, right? Are you here to gain body mass, like muscle, right? Or are you here to lose some fat, right? You can do both, but you can't have it all at the same time, right? You can have it all, but not at the same time, right? Think about what your goals are. And then after that, you'll be picking a particular strategy to try different techniques, right? Or different training style. I know this is kind of old school and I might get my terminology a bit wrong here, but there's anaerobic and there's aerobic training, right? Aerobic, from what I recall, is like circuit training. You run around in your spandex, you're doing a bunch of dumb exercises, which is all which all really just amasses to cardio, which is just a cardio workout. Then there's anaerobic, which is basically directed towards muscle building, right? So what you'd think of as dumbbells, weight lifting. And, and anaerobic exercises don't have to just be weight lifting. They could be body weight exercises, right? But they're focused on building your body, right? Not so much focused on losing weight. If I wanna go and build muscle, I don't wanna run around in a circuit. I wanna go and lift some weights, get bigger, feel the pump, make sure my muscles get broken down to build back up, right? That's how that's, that's how you get bigger muscles. They, you break down the fibers and they grow back stronger, right? Kind of like your psychology. I gotta make you sick first and give you the medicine. So once you've decided that, there's definitely different styles of training and I'll leave that to the YouTube fitness world to let you decide. Just try not to get too caught up with changing your style of training every week, right? So there's core movements which are called compound lifts or competition lifts because in the strongman world or strength training world, these are competition lifts. So that is your bench press, your deadlift and your squat, right? But the reason they're called compound lifts is because they work more than one muscle. It takes your back, your pecs, your shoulders, your triceps, your legs even to sturdy yourself and even your core to do a bench press. It's not as simple as just working your pecs. Although that's the target muscle, it takes other varieties of muscles to move, right? Remember, you're one machine with lots of little moving parts, right? You don't, you're not just an inanimate object with one like part to you, right? There's 
there's hundreds of bones in you there's hundreds of muscles and ligaments and all kinds of things right all kinds of cool shit happening under the surface of your anatomy right so your compound lifts work other muscles then there's isolation movements right which is mostly machines and you can use some free weights to do these something like a bicep curl would be called an isolation movement because you're aiming to get your bicep. So you've got your compounds and your isolations, right? For weightlifting. So when training, it breaks down into these couplets, adaption and progression. So when you do an exercise for a period of time, your body starts to adapt to it. And once it adapts to it, you can then begin to progress. So what might that look like in the real world? You do your bicep curls and your body starts to adapt to your 5 kg, right? And then you find it's too light and you could do too many reps and you don't feel sore and you don't break up down any muscle anymore. That's you adapting. So to progress, you add another 5 kg and now you do 10 kg curls, right? And that's your progress. Then there's frequency and intensity. Frequency would be, for instance, how many sets you do, how many reps you do. Intensity would be your subjective gauge of how difficult those sets are and how difficult those reps are right the more you progress the less frequency you have to do the more intensity you benefit from right and when you start out you don't want to go too hard in your intensity because you damage yourself and then more damage means more recovery and speaking of recovery the last part of this equation is rest and recovery you don't grow while you're in the gym you don't grow while you're doing the exercise you grow when you're resting most of your actual physical growth and repairing of your body happens when you're sleeping and in order for that to happen you need to eat right so just imagine like dr mike likes to say your body's full of a bunch of builders and mechanics and technicians and you want them to build you this bloody 600 story building right decked out with everything but you're not giving them the raw materials to do it they're going to look at you like well, what, what do you want us to do right we'll just start stealing materials from over here so now your foundation's falling apart right you need to feed your body for it to rest and recover and grow right so those little equations those couplets are the foundation of the physical part of this training all right there is a difference and a distinction between bodybuilding and fitness right bodybuilding is more focused on your muscle gain and muscle maturity over time and just getting bigger and more defined right fitness is more looking at your overall health right your cardiovascular your respiratory system your heartbeat your heart rate how you breathe getting better improving with your fitness you're looking at your overall health and, and muscle does come into fitness right you can't move around without muscles being a certain level of health right but bodybuilding is more concerned with the physique right how you look how you show up in the world right not so much how you're able to function right and don't don't get caught in the rabbit hole of bodybuilders versus functional training right they both have pros they both have cons be in the middle right become the bruce lee of the bodybuilding and fitness world right i take what works and i use it right so of course a very key thing is exercise selection that's picking your exercises that's part of what i said before you start you want to look at what training style or modality you're going to go for exercise selection is important if you want to grow your quads you're not going to go in the gym and start doing biceps every day right for most women they do focus more on the downstairs so they need to select exercises that perpetuate more growth in those areas right so your leg presses your squats your hamstring curls right your deadlifts right they'll be looking more at your lower body right even though you should never neglect the rest of your body because you get imbalances and other people can spot it right but don't let that same thing worry you because genetics are genetic some people are like well he never trains his legs look at his skinny legs no he trains his legs but genetically he doesn't have the ability to grow muscles the same way as you do right you walk down the street and you see someone with massive juicy calves and you'd be like fucking hell they must train those no no genetically they just they just got them right their mum was fat their dad was fat and because of their body weight they had to fucking carry that body weight and guess what carries that body weight your lower half right so of course you can have more muscle in that right so don't don't diss people don't disregard people and remember don't compete and don't compare right if you want to make yourself feel better by making someone else feel shit then you deserve everything that's coming right in the fitness industry there are various factions right and then there's various methodologies so you've got your science bros then you've got your gym bros right take the best from both of them learn your body mechanics if you care to this extent because no one that really that is living a normal life has time to delve this deep into shit like this but truthfully, you kind of should, right? You get one life, you get one vehicle, and if you don't know how your vehicle works, you don't know how to drive your vehicle, you're not gonna have a very long life. 
right? So just consider that, right? But don't get caught up in those factions. Oh, this is all science. This is how it works, right? But you've got no progress. Or this is all bro, but you've got no intelligence of how your body actually functions and you hurt yourself quite often, right? Don't be either of those fools. Just be in the middle, man. Just take the good information and use it. But don't change your fucking exercise routine every day or every week. Give it time to work, right? Muscle growth takes time, so you need to step back and watch. Again, I must say, big up the Nicocados out there and anybody that has had the will, had the courage to actually do something, right? Not saying you have to, but you did something, so big up to you. And if you're this far on the video, then you're more than likely gonna do something too, because this kind of shit isn't the kind of shit you'd sit through if you didn't care, right? Hold on, I'm a smidget entertaining. <laughs> you're probably at the start of your journey if you're entertaining my my entertainment at this point right so remember less is more in the beginning and as you progress you add on you learn more you do more right so, so don't hurt yourself just take it easy less is more in the beginning adapt right progress adaption progression frequency intensity rest recovery right let's get down to the brass tacks right I've talked a little bit around the subject, but what are the things that you actually need to help you pull this off sustainably? First of all, we'll talk tech side, right? I recommend two apps and one you can get an equivalent of, well, both you can get your equivalent, whichever you prefer, but these are the free versions and the easiest versions, right? Get yourself a Fitbit if you can. I'm not I'm not endorsing Fitbit, even though Fitbit can't check, like Google, bro, like, come on, bro. Anyway, <laughs> the tech side, two things that'll help you, right? Get a Fitbit, it tracks your steps, it tracks your sleep, and then you can also put in your calories, and this, this coincides with the next app I'm gonna tell you. Get an app called My Fitness Pal. It's a free app, you get, you sign up, right? And what you do with it is you can input your food. But what makes it easier, if you tend to eat a lot of food in packets and stuff like that, and especially if you wanna have a snack, biscuits, you just scan the barcode, it tells you how much calories the food is, right? So this helps you stay on track. Get My Fitness Pal and get a Fitbit equivalent, right? And you can link your Fitbit equivalent or your uh, Apple Watch equivalent to my fitness and it will deduct or add calories based on how much you've walked around because it counts your steps and how much you've exercised and how high your heart rate was. Now always remember any watch, any um like fitness tracker is 30% off, right? So allow for 30% inaccuracy. So don't take it as gospel, use it as a guideline. And the reason I say that too, especially when it comes to calorie counting, do your calorie counting for a set amount of time, right? Give it a couple months. Even if you're not cutting, you're not bulking, you're just maintaining. Because once you've counted your calories to a certain point in life, then you can more comfortably and better move on to intuitive eating, right? Because you have a grasp of how much calories stuff are. So even if you feel like picking out, you know, only a certain limit, I'm gonna go with this cheat meal, right? And even calling it a cheat meal is bad psychology. It's just food, right? There's no good food, there's no bad food, it's just food, right? It's all fuel for your body. That's it, right? So, use those two apps to help you get a grasp of what your average steps are, how high your heart rate goes, and just to track, right? And track your calories and track the meals, right? And when you start to actually look up, so like, even in the business world, right? You can't make any progress without tracking things, right? You don't know where to improve and where you're doing well if you don't track it, right? I'm not telling you to go out there and make a diary because you don't have to. And to be fair, in some worlds, right? If you make a diary, you tell the plan, you plan to fail, right? But we're talking food, so don't let that distract you. That's just me sneaking in some subversive shit, like, think before you do that, right? So there's two apps you can use, right? Now let's talk supplements. We're only gonna talk about things that are proven to work and are cost effective to buy, right? All the other shit that you might get from Greg Doucet or your local supplement shop or your fucking My Protein or your Huel, don't even fucking get me started on Huel and Bulk and that shit, right? That's another thing I should have added to that list of don'ts. If you do that shit, you're gonna look like an arsehole and we're all gonna look at you like, this guy is unserious, right? So just keep that shit in mind. Don't fall for fancy brands and packaging and marketing, right? And I know I'm not trying to defame you guys, I'm trying to just help normal people. Get your real food sources first. Remember what Eddie's saying, right? Eddie? Unfortunately, some of the guys in the fitness industry, they've been educated wrong. They cannot understand that it's possible for somebody to feel better by just eating real food. Come on, kids, eat real food. You feel better and better. Don't listen to the guys who call themselves coaches. Listen, you can be as educated as you want. If you've been educated with bullshit, you might be knowledgeable in bullshit. That's what they are. Wake the fuck up, all of you. Get your real food sources first before you go for your supplements, right? But the supplements I'm gonna give you are proven to work and one optional, right? Which just helps with the other one. Creatine. 
it's proven to work it helps your recovery and of course it gives you water retention in certain areas which pertain to muscles looking bigger and rounder and fuller right it's proven to work helps with recovery helps you look fuller and rounder now it doesn't work straight away you need to build it up it's like antihistamine you can't just take one antihistamine of low quality and think it's going to just cure you of your allergies right it builds up in your system over time right creatine proven to work right the second thing is an optional supplement which isn't necessary like eddie will tell you and that would be protein powder that's just to help you get your foot on the ladder of growing muscles right if you forget to eat certain types of food that have high quality proteins like your chickens your beef your pork your fish right or if you're vegan you can get vegan protein for a time i had vegan protein right it doesn't taste great but then again no protein tastes great unless of course you get clear whey protein which has like you can get in tropical flavors and shit like that and it just it goes down like a dream it's like i'm not even drinking this horrible milky shit because i'm lactose intolerant myself right so i don't like milky shit so there, there's there's two options there. there's various different types of proteins you've got your caseins you've got your ways just have a look at it right it's one google away so you've got creatine you've got protein now this third one is optional and is not proven to work but it helps right and they're called bcaas which is basically a mixture of amino acids which come from proteins right so the reason i say bcaas right i'm adding them in there because me personally i like to use my bcaas in place of things like juice right so instead of buying a fucking bottle of robinson's or rabina i'll get my bcaa's in a flavor that i like and i'll mix it with my creatine and i'll drink that right and it's juice with good benefits for me right and it's not it's not proven to have any uh, particular effect on muscles and shit because we know amino acids are, are part of the foundation of being a human right carbon proteins amino acids are in there right so if you can get a few more you get them but that's a bonus and optional you don't need to but remember creatine has no taste so for me it's it's, it's smart right i don't take no pre-workouts some people take them but that's another way that's another like marketing ruse right it's just stimulants right and if you get hooked on stimulants you fuck your body up you fuck your chemical balance up right so even though i'm a coffee drinker i know that coffee is bad for me in the long run right but habits are habits so if you choose to get into the world of pre-workouts be aware they're dangerous right and they can have like damaging effects especially on your heart and shit like that right you do like i had a pre-work one time right and my heart was just be beating so fast right and it's like the fuck is this this meth or some shit like what the fuck is this right so just be careful don't try that shit you know you see kids on fucking instagrams and shit and bodybuilders dry scooping don't do it you don't need to right as long as you've had a meal or two like maybe two hours an hour before the gym and you've had a favorite drink and maybe just have a fucking can of coke right diet coke or something like that. i know it's bad too but it's a it's a safe amount of caffeine it's a safe amount of sugar to get you going right without having you fucking getting jeers and you know looking like a fucking prick right so there's your optional supplements that work and of course a vitamin supplement if you want but i'm not a doctor but they do say right don't buy a multivitamin as your body doesn't do well with that right get them individually and take the ones you need right especially if you're a man or even if you're a woman you're looking out for your testosterone your hormonal balance right because a big part of building muscles is hormones right that's why people take steroids and testosterone and you name it right that's 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 for advanced people right and people that want to compete my suggestion to you is if you're not going to compete if you don't do a sport why take steroids right i know you want to look good but it comes at cost these people are willing to pay the price because they're willing to win something all right remember that and the chances are like i know i keep seeing a lot of it but like there's a lot a lot of pathetic people that take steroids that don't even make the progress like i would make you would make just by being consistent hard working they, they won't even look like us and it's gonna be like you you're a loser <laughs> you know and it's not it's not a knock to you if you're a hard gainer because you can still do this naturally right new gains refers to the idea that most progress occurs in the first few years but this can be harmful many see it as a brief time period for rapid growth leading some people to use peds early or quit thinking further progress is insignificant but most people are further down this curve than they think because almost everyone could be training more effectively you can see this in popular beginner fitness influencers they're often under eating and have a lot to learn with technique nobody starts optimally if you were to download all of these people's knowledge you would simply gain at a faster rate much like if you were to optimize your sleep nutrition and habits but even once you've been training effectively for five plus years these scientific estimates are not a rule and many surpass them age 18 ty green won wbf world championships and he was poor as hell he could not afford steroids he could barely afford food from what I understand and still won WBF Worlds at age 18. If you take that shit too soon, it's it's like you're spinning your wheels in the sand. Like you haven't made a foundation for your body 
to become big like Ronnie Coleman, to become big like Jay Cutler. Right? You've made no foundation. Even the biggest, baddest bodybuilders ever, they started natural, right? And then they got to a level where it's like, oh, everyone in the gym here is competing to be in this level. So come in this back room and take some drugs, right? They knew what they were doing, right? Don't do that unless you know what you're doing, right? So don't be a newbie taking drugs, thinking you're cool and try to flex in the trigger. And then when a guy like me comes in with a fucking jumper and a hoodie on and out fucking lifts you and out fucking muscles you, you're gonna feel like a prick, right? So don't do that. Just be cool, be normal, right? Transformations are not easy and they take a lot of psychological energy, right? They take a lot of willpower. One thing you have to know in life, right? Everybody's going through something and everybody has the DNA lot, right? You don't get to decide who you're gonna be before you get here on earth. So don't diss people, don't look down on people. And to be frank, don't even look up to people just because they look better or they're good at something. Remember, we're just humans. Although we're not made equal genetically, we are in the eyes of whatever supreme dream you think exists right so remember that just take it easy and do what's best for you we're all different and if you're trying to do a transformation now right and it's by the time you see this it's probably going to be winter this is the best time to hunker down and get shit done before you want to stop before everyone starts filling up the gym in like january and just making a mess of things and not being serious right you don't want to start hard training in the heat of the summer it's not fun right do it now be like fucking uncle iro that's his name and while everyone's sleeping and acting like yeah shit is sweet you're training right you're fucking putting in the work like vegeta and goku and you're just gonna step out the fucking hyperbolic chamber like gohan and be like look cell we could do this the easy way or the hard way, right? Yes, yeah, be that guy, right? And big up yourself for making it this far in the video. And remember, body dysmorphia is a thing. It affects big people and small people, right? It affects muscly people and skinny people, right? It affects me and it affects you. So be kind, all right? See you later.